There are several things that you can do as an IT administrator to help your district to get the most value out of Google Classroom. As a former high school teacher, I have seen firsthand how big a difference some of these changes can make on my classroom and ability to teach students using Google Classroom. Let's check out some of the key features in the Admin Console together. Hi, my name is John Sowash. Welcome to the Google Admin Bootcamp. Let's get started by visiting the apps section of the admin console, and then we'll go to Google Workspace and then scroll down to Classroom. There's really not a whole lot in here, but I wanna walk you through a couple of key things. Probably the most important is gonna be right here under general settings, and that's going to determine who can create classes. Now, I recommend that you set this to verified teachers only. Now, how do you verify a teacher? It's very simple. Anyone who is a member of this Google group called Classroom Teachers is a verified teacher and will have the option to create a Google Classroom course. Um, this group is automatically created by the admin console. It is very important that you not delete this group. Um, this group is necessary for Google Classroom to function normally. Now, when you set it to verify teachers only, you need to make sure that your instructional staff are all listed as members of this group. Now, they don't need, they're not going to use this group. They don't need to know they're in this group. They're not going to send messages to this group. This is uh, more of an infrastructure piece that allows Google Classroom to know who's a student and who's a teacher. One of the common things that I see when I visit schools is um, forgetting to add new hires to this group. I do professional development. I say, let's go create classes. And then all the hands of the new teachers go up says, I can't create a class. I can only join it. And so you need to make sure um, that uh, those new hires are in here. You also need to make sure that somehow students have not gotten into this group. Um, and it's not uncommon. I have seen it happen. Uh, so make sure that this is a good, clean group and Google Classroom will work just the way it's intended. All right, let's look at the second thing that you want to do. So we just looked at who can create classes. Now let's look at who can join classes. Here's our class settings. Um, this is up to you. It really depends. Um, most of the time you're going to say um, who can join classes, any workspace user. Um, if you set it to any user like mine is, that would mean that someone with a Gmail account could potentially join a class. I run courses for you know, the general public. So that's how I have mindset. But most of the time you're going to want to do workspace user um, and probably just classes in allowed list uh, domains. Those allow list domains are listed right down here. Now, this allows you to identify other districts, schools, or organizations that you partner with. And it's becoming more and more common for dual enrollment programs, um, extracurricular programs, um, uh, you know, online courses and things like that to use Google Classroom. And if your students are going to join classes set up in those domains, then you're gonna to need to whitelist them. Um, so local community colleges, online programs in your area, I've seen Future Farmers Association, 4-H, coding programs, things like that. You may need to you know, add them to your allow list. You have to add them to your allow list. They have to add your domain to their allow list before this can work. And that'll just allow the collaboration to work uh, much better. It's one of the things they always do when I go and visit uh, a school. Those are two really important, really big ones um, that you definitely want to check out. And we're going to talk about the student unenrollment. So this will really help your teachers a lot. Students can join a class just by entering the class code, but they will not be able to remove themselves from the class if you select this option. And I recommend that you do this. Uh, you would be surprised how many students have magically gotten removed from a class right before a big test or project is due. Um, 
It causes all kinds of problems. So allowing or preventing students from removing themselves will save your teachers uh, a lot of aggravation. Those three things I would consider absolutely critical for every district uh, to look at and configure. I want to talk about a couple of additional things um, that I think could be a good idea as well. The first is to take an audit of your existing courses. And uh, it's actually very difficult in the admin console to see what classes exist within your domain. But there's a very good Google Drive add-on called Classroom Control that you can install and use. It's free. Uh, it is developed by Clay Smith, a wonderful developer. He actually works for Google, uh, but has designed and developed a bunch of utilities for IT admins. Classroom Control is an add-on for Google Sheets that will list all of the classes in your domain. I'll go ahead and uh, list it. This is very helpful for me to see what classes exist and more specifically to archive any old classes or especially orphaned classes. So an orphaned class would be a class that is still active, but no longer has an active teacher because they've left the district, um, their account has been suspended, something like that. This is kind of an issue uh, because when you go to Google Classroom, a student or a teacher, it's going to list the classes that you're currently taking. It's important that this list here only shows the courses someone is currently taking. You don't want last year's and three years ago courses uh, listed here. So generally, I tell teachers to go in and archive a course once it has been completed and final grades have been submitted. If teachers have not done that or they're no longer teaching so they, they don't have an account to do so, you can use Classroom Control to automatically look at and archive these courses. So all I have to do is actually change this to, you know, from active to archive, and it will automatically archive uh, any old courses. This is just a great way to get a general sense of what classes exist, what their status is, um, and where they're at, who the primary teacher is, things like that. So this is a great add-on. Again, it's called Classroom Control, and I can um, encourage you to check it out and use it to manage your courses through the, uh, the console. The final thing that I'll share um, that you might want to consider doing is just take a look at the reports in the console itself. So I'm going to go down to the reporting section to Apps Reports and then Google Classroom. Your school administrator, instructional coaches might be interested in some of this data. Now, this is very high level information, just kind of give you a general sense of what's going on in your district, how many active classes there are. You should be able to, you know, kind of get a sense of um, how many you should have and how many are actually very active. And then if I scroll down, I can see the number of posts that are created both by teachers and by students. At the beginning of the year, I can see, you know, I should see a big spike in courses that are created as we uh, as we get started. These are all included with the free version of Google Workspace. Uh, there are some more advanced reports that you can get if you upgrade to the EDU Plus uh, version of Workspace, but this will get you started at least. I'd like to encourage you to check out my second video if you are an EDU Plus subscriber, where I'm going to go through the configuration for some of the premium features, such as grading policies, school matches, creating roles so that tech coaches and administrators can visit other classes, and reviewing and approving Google Classroom add-ons. If you enjoy Google Admin tips like this, I also encourage you to sign up for my free weekly newsletter. Every week, I send out a tip on how to use the Google Admin console to manage your users, devices, and data.